I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. The town of Wallkill teenager who had been charged with the April 2008 murder of Middletown resident Robert Kwiatkowski is a free man. This morning, Orange County Court Judge Robert Freehill granted a request made by the attorney for 19-year-old Atik Weston to release his client. A murder indictment against Weston was dismissed last month after prosecutors discovered that a key witness had lied to them and to a grand jury. Weston had faced murder charges for the fatal stabbing of Kwiatkowski as he walked home from work along Wickham Avenue. The district attorney's office will not present the case to a new grand jury at this time, but because the indictment was dismissed on technical grounds, prosecutors could seek a new indictment against Weston if new evidence is uncovered. I never thought that I would be here for 20 years, but that's the way it turned out. And I'm going to finish up this 20 years. He was elected to his 10th two-year term as congressman in November of 2010, but this year will be his last. Hudson Valley Democrat Congressman Maurice Hinchy formally announcing this afternoon that he will not seek re-election this fall. This year, of course, marks the 20th year that I've had the high honor of representing our part of New York in the United States House of Representatives. It's been the greatest privilege of my life to serve the residents of Ulster, as well as Orange, Dutchess, Sullivan, Delaware, Broome, Tioga, and Tompkins counties. It's a wonderful district. His retirement ends a political career that spanned 38 years, beginning with 18 years in the state assembly. Senator Charles Schumer served with him both in Albany and then in Washington. I call him to this day Mighty Mo. And the thing that I think most stands out about Maurice is he was one of these people, you know, who thought about things, came to the conclusion what the right thing was, and then went ahead and pursued it, regardless of the political consequences. And so he had a lot of admirers, people who might not have agreed with his politics, but knew he was the real deal, he was a genuine person. Hinchy's 22nd Congressional District includes the city of Middletown, where Mayor Joe DiStefano says he's been a fighter for the city and its residents. His constituent service and his outreach to the people and his ability to state a point and defend those who he thinks uh, were being, uh, uh, you know, oppressed and, and uh, always working for the underdog. It didn't matter whether it was a $14 million for the sewer plant or the replacement of the, so uh, the sidewalk at the, at the local post office. Um, Maurice Hinchy was there. He was always in touch with us and um, not, he was a, an advocate. Hinchy's undergone two colon cancer surgeries, but today he reaffirmed that he is cancer free and that his decision to retire was not based on health issues. Meantime, last night, Hinchy's wife, Allison Lee, was arrested on a DWI charge following a traffic accident in Albany. It was her second a drunk driving arrest in the past year. Investigators will be called in to try to determine the cause of a fire that destroyed a mobile home in the town of Wallkill earlier today. The blaze broke out shortly before noon in the, the residence on Route 211 East near the intersections with 5th Avenue and uh, Ferrara Drive. Firemen from Mechanicstown and vicinity fought the blaze, which was uh, fully involved. When they got to the scene, there were no initial reports of any injuries. Two people were displaced. Firemen were looking at a short within an electrical fan as the possible cause. Town of Platico police are awaiting the results of toxicology reports to determine if criminal charges should be filed against the driver of a vehicle that slammed head-on into an oncoming car on Route 32 in Platico, killing the woman behind the wheel. Police say 70-year-old Jean Schuyler of the town of Newburgh was driving home when her uh, car was struck. Schuyler was pronounced dead at the scene after being extricated from the wreckage. The other driver, 48-year-old Christopher Quintana of the city of Newburgh, was airlifted to Westchester Medical Center with undisclosed injuries. Prior to the crash, a motorist called 911 to tell police Quintana's vehicle was being driven erratically. Police say his car uh, struck Schuyler's car before they could intercept him. Toxicology tests will determine if alcohol or a medical condition were in any way contributing factors in the fatal collision. Elsewhere, a Middletown man pleaded guilty today to a first-degree assault charge in connection with a shooting last September in the city of Middletown. 20-year-old Christopher Mojica wounded a 28-year-old man during a fight on 
Houston Avenue. In exchange for his plea in Orange County Court, Majika is expected to be sentenced to a prison term of 15 to 18 years. A two-month jail sentence has been handed down to the operator of an adult care home in Hamptonburg. 64-year-old Vanessa Sortano was arrested in October of 2010 for leaving three disabled men on their own in an unheated house with no electricity or running water. Prosecutors say when uh, state police discovered the men, one of them, quote, uh, was uh, blood-covered, crying, shaking from the cold, and incoherent. Sartano's attorney said his client tried to do her best but ran into problems and did bring the men food. Sartano had to plead guilty to three counts of endangering the welfare of an incompetent or physically disabled person. The proposed state budget that Governor Andrew Cuomo unveiled uh, this week includes almost $323 million for an assortment of projects in the Catskills and Hudson Valley. That list includes $106 million for rehabilitation of the Newburgh Beacon Bridge and $148 million for runway and terminal expansion improvements at Stewart Airport. A complete listing of projects that will uh, get state funding under the governor's proposed budget plan can be found here at Record Online and in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. Orange County Executive Ed Diana showcased a scaled-down proposal to demolish and replace the now-closed and storm-damaged County Government Center with a smaller and less costly structure. County Exec's revised plan, which he outlined during a meeting of the Goshen Chamber of Commerce, would uh, cost about $90 million, down from the $136 million proposal that had been on his drawing board. Diana says uh, the revised building replacement proposal would also include renovations to other county buildings. Orange County legislators are expected to decide on a course of action in the next couple of months. And Senator Charles Schumer says the now stalled Exit 131 interchange project on Route 17 in Woodbury would get off the ground if Congress passes a $3.5 billion highway bill. Uh, Schumer was in Woodbury to report that the first phase of the $72.3 million project to improve traffic flow around Woodbury Common has reportedly been pushed back from next year to 2017 because of a lack of funding. The senator says some money from the federal bill would give the state DOT the money needed to move the interchange project forward. Schumer says he'll uh, push the, make the Woodbury project a higher priority. Well, expect to see a dusting of snow on the ground and on your car when you head off to work tomorrow morning. But uh, after that, Friday's forecast includes high temperatures of around 30 degrees under a mostly sunny sky. Saturday's weather will feature a wintry mix of precipitation that will leave roads slushy. Temperatures will reach the mid-30s. You'll find the latest winter weather information and uh, breaking news right here at Record Online. And read tomorrow's Times-Herald Record for the news and features that you've come to depend on. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter. <laughs>